So some time has passed since I posted a video about the whole coronavirus situation in Japan and how Japan is faring with that. And by the time I'm filming this video, a week will have passed since the Prime Minister declared a state of emergency. So I thought it's probably a good time to do an update. And if you haven't seen the first video, I will put a link to that in the description. And it'll be a good idea to watch that because I'll be touching on a bunch of topics that I mentioned in that video. Now keep in mind that the opinions that are expressed in this video are uniquely my own. And since I am not Japanese, I am a foreigner living in Japan, which makes it a little different compared to, let's say, how a local Japanese person might view the situation. On top of that, I live in a major city and I live in Osaka, so that might obviously be different from say someone who's living in Tokyo or even Fukuoka and definitely different from someone who's say living in a more rural area. A lot of things have happened since I posted that video and last week the Ministry of Education announced that all schools should be postponed until well, the end of Golden Week, which is May 6th, and Golden Week is the term used that to describe the consecutive set of holidays that make up a long vacation during the year. So schools have to remain closed until May 6th, which means students are still not allowed on school grounds, but that doesn't exempt teachers from having to go in. I work at a school, and let me tell you that it's individually interpreted how the school will be able to handle the situation of school closures until after Golden Week. Some schools, including private institutions, institutions, they have decided to create online classes as many schools have worldwide. However, if your school doesn't have the resources or the technological abilities or capabilities to be able to achieve that, teachers are pretty much expected to go to school where they're going to have to think of other alternatives such as paperwork, which they will mail out to students so that they can have their assignments and their homework and then they will send it back to the school or either come in person to the school once a week and they have a designated schedule for these drop-offs. Basically, there's no set guideline on how schools should go about or handle this kind of situation or how they should take actions, which is why every school is handling this quite differently. And each school is also implementing their own set of conditions and policies in terms of leave. The only three conditions that teachers are basically exempt from work are if you have a family member that is exhibiting symptoms or has been infected by the coronavirus. Second, if you have a child who is a of elementary school age and therefore you have to be at home and because you're the primary caregiver for this child or you have been exposed to somebody who has been infected by the coronavirus if you do not match any of those three conditions you pretty much have to show up at work Speaking of postponement, two of Japan's biggest theme parks have also announced further extensions of being closed. Tokyo Disney Resort and Universal Studios, or USJ for short, have announced on the same day that they're going to be further extending park closures. And even that might change depending on what happens in the upcoming weeks. The last time they made an announcement, the parks were really expected to stay closed until mid-April, and they're pushing it back again for another month. And what this means, especially for Tokyo Disney Resort, because they were were set to open, have a grand opening of the new Fantasyland, and really the opening for that area is up in the air. It was supposed to be one of their biggest years this year, and unfortunately they're just going to have to push back that a little bit more. As you know, the Tokyo Olympics have been postponed until next year. Did that surprise me? No, not really. What surprised me more was how long it took for that announcement or for that decision to be made, and Japan was uh, almost delusionally optimistic for the most part, insisting that the the Tokyo Olympics will continue to be held in spite of the pandemic of the coronavirus after much international pressure. I think that made them realize that it's, things are not going the way they expected or planned it to be. With the state of emergency, this has prompted a lot of businesses to close, hotels to close, a lot of retail uh, industries have closed down because of that in order to mitigate the large groups of people from gathering and so a lot of people have also opted for trying to work from home. And if the companies or the businesses are not able to handle online or remote work. They have very little choice in that they have to continue calling in their employees to be physically present. So I would say still very much a large population of Japan are still outside. They are still carrying on life as if there has been no state of emergency declared with the exception of lower numbers of people gathering on the weekends. I still see a lot of people taking public transportation because that's how they commute to work. In the morning, it's still pretty much a rush hour, although not as heavy as it used to be. It is during the weekends where you can see a much more stark contrast to 
what it's like during the weekdays. There's definitely less people on the streets, especially because the retail sector, a lot of it has closed down. A lot of big hubs, shopping centers, malls, places where people tend to gather. If those things are closed, people don't really have a reason to go outside and meet. Speaking of shops, the last time I mentioned that there's been a little bit of panic buying in drugstores, especially in terms of the toilet paper and tissue paper phenomenon. Fortunately, that rumor has died down, even though it took quite a while for that to die down. I continuously saw low stock or shortage of tissue paper and toilet paper for another month. There's a different kind of panic buying now or a different kind of shortage now and that is hand soap. And I'll add one more thing to that. Japan just looks clean. It took a virus to get people to wash their hands more often. And I'll leave it at that. There's still no masks, still a lot of shortage on masks. The government has proposed that they will be mailing out cloth masks, two per household, which is kind of like saying, if you had to choose two people to save in your house from the coronavirus, who would that be? Kind of hypothetical situation. But the government has reassured us that there's no need to panic buy about food, there's no need to panic buy about necessities like medicine is still readily available. Anything that you need for your daily life is basically still readily available. And even though there has been a state of emergency declared and there's been a push for self-isolation, it doesn't mean that that has been mandated. And what that means is the government can't force you to stay at home. The government can't force you to isolate yourself or take on self-quarantine, they don't have that power. They don't have that ability to enforce that kind of rule or that policy, which means that people are free to walk up and down the streets. They're free to still gather in groups. They're free to meet up outside. The government is not going to force you to stay home or to go home in those kinds of situations. They're not even allowed to fine you based on disorderly conduct. So have things really changed since the state of emergency? Not really. People are still out and about and it feels like nothing really has changed. Attitudes haven't really Really changed, behavior hasn't really changed, which is why I say things haven't really changed for the most part. I mentioned in the last video that there's been a lot of criticism in how the government has been handling this whole coronavirus situation, especially in regards to how slow they are in taking action or how delayed their decisions um, have come to be. It's still very much that case. And on top of being slow to act, what's also frustrating is the sudden decisions that they are making or the sudden call to action for the nation to take. And the reason why that's so frustrating is because there's really not a lot of time to prepare. There's nothing that hints that it's going to happen in advance. There's nothing really that gives you kind of like a heads up, hey, this is probably what we're going to be announcing, what we're going to be declaring. A lot of the times it's very short notice, nor do they give you very clear guidelines on how to act and how to behave and what kind of attitudes to take. It's ultimately a very general announcement. There's very little guidelines. There's almost no specifications on how to implement these kinds of things into action, which is why it's ultimately up to individuals and individual institutions on how they are going to handle themselves in this kind of situation. Speaking of which, there's no such thing as social distancing. That concept hasn't taken off here as it has in other nations. People are still very much in close quarters of each other and it doesn't help that Japan is one of the most densely populated countries in the world. It's even hard to space yourself out on the streets when a road is exactly the width of one car. There's very little space to spread out. If you even take a look at the press conferences that government officials are holding, you can see how closely seated they are next to each other. There is literally no way awareness of social distancing in this country. When I go to the grocery store, the drugstore, there is no distancing of any kind. People are just moving around like they used to, uh, as usual, as normal. The only thing that people are proactive about doing in terms of taking cautionary measures against this epidemic is wearing face masks. That is basically a signal to other people that I am aware of the coronavirus situation and basically to give everybody a false sense of security because no mask is going to protect you from that virus. So the state of emergency is basically one step of how the government is implementing action on mitigating the outbreak or the spread of the virus. They've also implemented an entry ban from 73 different countries and that includes America, China, most of Europe, Australia, Britain, South Korea. If you have visited or come from any of those countries, you are basically rejected from entering Japan. And in the same way, if someone leaves Japan and goes to any of those countries, upon returning to Japan, it's going to be quite difficult upon re-entry if you're not a Japanese national. And that might mean a quarantine period of up to two weeks. That might mean refusal of entry. It entirely depends on immigration policy at that point. Which leads into the question of, is Japan safe to travel? Is it good to go to Japan at this time? 
obviously not. And we don't know how long this entry ban is going to be implemented for. It's indefinite. It could be even longer than May and go well into the summer, which means that if the parks open again during that time, they will definitely see a big hit. It's during the summertime that a lot of visitors from outside Japan go to visit the parks and they definitely make bank during those months. And it's not just the entertainment industry that's obviously going to be hit. Japan's local economy is going to be hit, period. What's still very much troubling and concerning, however, is the fact that there's still an increase in number of cases happening in Tokyo, and that goes the same for almost any major city in Japan. The numbers are not dropping in any way, they're growing exponentially, doubling, sometimes even tripling, and that happened within a span of one week, especially in the case of Tokyo. So things are definitely not getting better at this point, and I think things are going to get worse before they get better. On top of that, we still are not aware of the actual number of cases of the coronavirus. And what I mean by that is there is no mass testing. There is not enough testing being done to confirm whether or not people who exhibit symptoms actually have the coronavirus. Because it's entirely possible that even individuals who are asymptomatic or have no symptoms or show very little signs of symptoms can still be carriers of the virus. Without mass testing, you're not able to confirm those kinds of cases. And really, testing is very restricted. It's limited to individuals who have high probability of having been infected by the virus, which means just because you have a cough or a cold or have short breath doesn't mean that you will be given a test. And that's kind of troubling because we are in spring and it is the season of hay fever and a lot of the symptoms associated with hay fever or even the cold is very similar to the symptoms that come with contracting the coronavirus. In short, that means the actual number of confirmed cases for the virus could be way higher than it is reported. It could be in the hundreds, it could be even in the thousands or even tens of thousands. Until more testing can be done, those numbers are probably not reality. So that's how things have been in the past month in Japan. Fortunately for me and my husband, we are doing fine. We are still very much taking cautionary measures. Let me know in the comments how you're handling the situation. Please take care of yourselves. Be aware, be careful, and be safe. And I'll see you in the next video.